Okay, Job chapter 29. This is the middle chapter of the Old Testament. So you take Genesis 1 to Malachi. This is the middle chapter. Not the Bible. The Old Testament. Moreover, Job continued his parable. We picked that up from chapter 27, verse 1. And said, Oh, that I were as in months past. If I were not where I am today. As in the days when God preserved me, when I was rich and all that I had. When his candle shined on my head, light. And when his light, I walked through darkness. Even when you walk through the world, you got God's light. You still got a direction. As I was in the days of my youth, young, strong, and the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, and I knew God, and I understand God, things were going well. When the Almighty God was yet with me, and he's been implying that God's not with him today, as we're writing now. When my children were about me, they're dead now. So Job's looking back and he's considering... God's not with him. When I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, wealth. And he had wealth. He had his children. And he was walking with God. Then the devil came along. And the devil messed it up on him. And remember, there are three principles of tragedy. <clears throat> God, the devil, and our own foolishness, and our own sin. We know by Job 1 and 2, it's the devil. Job don't know that. His three friends don't know that. And verse 7 to 25 is, Job is a judge. He sits at the gate of the city where judges sat. And he's going to tell us what a judge does. When I went out to the gate, that's where they were. They didn't have a courthouse. When they had a matter of Ruth chapter 4, they went to the gate of the city, they gathered the people together, and I got this case. Through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, so he had a place of his city. And with all the gates in the cities, there were the judges, and Job had his place in the city. And he had his seat. The young men say, saw me. And hid themselves. And the age arose and stood up. This is honor and respect. And he says the age. Even the older people respected Job. Because not of Job's age. But because Job is a judge. A man of authority in that city. And that's far to be respect and honor today. Of city employees. It's far worse. Of no respect and no honor. The princes, that's the government, refrain talking. They wouldn't even speak. The man, the judge, he's the man. He's the one in charge. And I've been in courtrooms before and I've watched the series and all that. And it's not like it is back then. You know, they'll speak out of order. They'll, they'll speak for every day. And they, they'll, they'll rank on the judge. You know, just rude and crude. But here the princes, the ones of the government, all right, you're going to speak, I need to be quiet. And lay their hand on their mouth. I'm not going to say a word. Where it comes from. The nobles, people of authority, people of, of knowledge, people of importance, held their peace. And their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. So the judges back then, according to Job, were men respected of authority, men who had honor of authority, and I don't care who you were in that city, you shut up. And you let the judge speak. And that's, that's, that picture is God. No matter what you think of God, you respect and you honor God and you shut up before God and you let God speak. When the ear heard me, people listened to the judge at then Job. Then it blessed me. I was happy when they listened. 
And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried. Poor man comes to the judge and says, this is my case. And if the poor man was right and the judge would rule properly in the authority of the poor man, and that's not always the same case. Because a lot of judges today, you know, they don't get nothing from poor people. They don't get nothing from the widow. They don't get nothing from the common person. But the higher-ups, the ambassadors, the, the corporate leaders, the, the people with the money, the politicians, oh, they can fatten their wallets. That's called bribery. That's called injustice. Job says, I was a proper judge before God. If the poor came to him and cried, and they were right, I delivered them. No one had any power over me. And if you've done the poor wrong, I delivered the poor. The fatherless, a child that has no father, and him that had none to help him. So the social justice is, the judge was to help the people regardless of who the person is. And if you are a, a, a man who has no father, your mother's a widow, you ain't nobody in that city. And if the king has done you injustice, if the rulers have done you injustice, if the power hunter have done you uh, injustice, you that have done the injustice need to do to the people, even if they're low and of no importance. And Job would do, and we're before the law. There's no Jewish law now. And if a man committed a crime that was worthy to be beaten, Job would say, I don't care who you are, you're going to be beaten. And as far as being rich, and as far as being poor, if you have been to the penalty of the law, you will do that penalty, and I will do it without any injustice, who you are, male, female, or whatever status you are. If you are guilty, you are guilty. If you are innocent, you're innocent. And Job would deliver. And he would help those who had no help. We live in such a justice system today, those that need help don't get it. We live in a justice system today that a person who has been arrested by a crime has the right to a phone call, has a right to a, 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 a transportation to the police department, has a right to a, a meals and hospital care and air conditioning and heating, and has a right to a lawyer that if he cannot afford one, it is his rights of Americans. What about the person who's been victimized? Hey, you go take care of yourself. That's not the justice of the Bible. That a man can rape a woman, and a woman has to testify and understand, and yet the rapist doesn't have to say a word. That a guilty party in this country, I declare the fifth. That's injustice. You don't care what, what you feel about me. I don't care about American politics. I don't care what the Bible says. And Job and the judges in this time of the Bible judges were correct and right regardless who you were. And if you were declared, I'm not going to say nothing. You, hey, if you were innocent, you would open up your mouth and defend yourself. Only the guilty would say, I ain't got nothing to say. I got my rights. So he was a help to those who had no help. Verse 13. The blessings of him that was all that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing with joy. So he defended those who were going to die. He defended the widow who had nobody to help. What could a widow do for the status quo of anybody in the village or in the city? Absolutely nothing. She had no money. She had no job. She had nothing. The rich can overpower the widow. Job says, uh-uh. And these charges, uh, if you come back over here, we're not going to read, but chapter 22, verses 1. Chapter 22, verses 22, 1 through 9. Eliphaz says, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. Eliphaz puts forth false accusations. And I'm looking where he, Look at this 22, verse 9. This is what we're going to look at. But 22, 1 through 9, the false accusation. But Eliphaz says in chapter 22, verse 9, Thou hast sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fathers, list, has been broken. 
not according to the word of Job. Eliphaz is a liar. Now, if the widow was guilty, Job said, okay, you're guilty. If the rich man persecuting was guilty, you're guilty. You know who Job had help for deciding these cases? He had God. Job says, I esteem the words of God more than my necessary food. I would assume that, that God says to Satan, he is choose evil, and man, that's my servant. I would assume that Job would say, okay, guys, wait a minute. I've heard both sides, okay? What are you going to do, do, Job? I'm going to go pray to God about this because I don't know. And I'm going to ask God, God, i got these two people in front of me. I don't know. Or God, I think he's guilty. That I think he's right. Uh, am I wrong or am I right? I would think that would be the character of Job that we learned so far. This nation would have a heart attack. The nation of the media would go absolutely haywire if a judge would leave the bench and say, I'm going in my chamber to pray over this matter. And that judge would be put to execution. How dare he mention he's going to pray to God. That's what Job, I believe that's what Job did. And probably the people with him. They had respect for God. So, 22 verses 1 through 9 are false charges. Verse 14, I put on righteousness. So he went to God, and it clothed me with judgment. Was as a robe and a diadem. That's a headband. Do you recognize that verse in the New Testament for the Christian? Is that not part of the armor of God? Righteousness? Judgment, a diadem, a robe. Are we not called to, to judge things? Are we not to look at a person and say, you know, really, your testimony, I don't think you're saved. I'm going to deal with you as a lost man. Or I'm, I see that you're saved. I'm going to help you grow as a Christian. And the worst people come up to it, uh, judge not, you should be judged. That's my job. Because I have a standard called the Bible. You got a rotten standard called your feelings, your heart, which is wicked above all things. Don't and then when you come up to me, tell me that you should not judge. You're judging me. Should just shut your mouth. So Job is a judge. He is a judge that went after God for righteousness. I was eyes to the blind. So he had blind people come up to him say. I can't see. Job would look for those eyes, through those eyes. The feet was eye to the lane. Job became the people who he took care of. Is that not Paul? Did not Paul say, I became for this to be close to them for Christ? I would go into the synagogues of the Jews to witness Christ to them. I became them so I could be more of Christ to them. Job is a type of Paul. Job saw that a man in his handicap, and he took that handicap, and he used it to help that person, if that person was innocent. And had done wrong, had been done wrong to that person. But I, if a blind or lame man had been guilty, he would have got the punishment, he would have got this, the, gravel, the gavel slammed down, guilty in the charges. I was a father to the poor. And poor shows up again. Father, title, respect. A father is, you know, and it was not just more, okay, I'll hear you, okay, all right, you're guilty, you're an innocent, next. He would take on that poor man, he would take on the responsibility as a father would take care of his child. Maybe he would take some of the poor people and say, listen, this is how you need to deal with your money. All right, you have won this case, this is what happened. Now, take my advice, take my counsel, and help yourself. That's what a father would do. That's what God the Father does. And the cause, the case, which I knew not, I searched out. Job saying, listen, if I had a case before me, I had no idea. I went and got the evidence. I went and got the testimony. I went out and got the facts before I ruled. I went and sought the witnesses. 
And the Bible, in the in the law that has not come yet, would say you're to diligently search, you're to make sure the matter is so, and you would have at least two or three witnesses when the law has not happened yet. And I think one of these points, too, is when he says, I put on righteousness. If I had not all the information, Job would go to God. Job would search out the evidence that's missing. You know, if he's listening to a case, you know what? It, it sounds like there's something missing. Somebody's not telling the full truth. Somebody's not telling the full lie. I'm going to find out who, what's going on here. And Job would not just make a, you know, a, a statement in the courtroom just to make the statement. All right, next. Okay, okay we're going to put this on the side. And I'm going to find out what's going on here. I'm going to get the truth. You wouldn't find that in any judge today in America. You can't. The backlog is so huge and so far and so many people waiting to get in a speedy court system of America. You ain't got enough time. Job did. He took the time. If I didn't know, he says, I searched it out. I break the jaws of the wicked. You stay in my courtroom, you're wicked, you're guilty. I'm going to break your teeth. I'm going to pull you down. I'm going to name who you are. I don't care if you're wicked. I don't care if you're guilty. I don't care if you're innocent. I don't care if you're poor. I don't care if you're a widow. I don't care if you're a prince. I don't care who you are. If you're guilty, you're guilty. If you're innocent, you're innocent. I also notice something right now, too. We have seen verse 7 to so far now, and we're going to see it through the rest of the chapter. Notice the pronouns I and me and my. Now we have already seen Job in chapter 27 say, verse 6, My righteousness I hold fast, I will not let it go. You know what Job's spilling his beans about? You know what he's proclaiming out of his mouth? Me, 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 myself, me, myself, self righteousness. Look how good I am. That's what he's doing. And God's going to use that. And pluck the spoil out of his teeth. You stole something, give it back. That's what he's saying. And then I said, I, 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 shall die in my nest. And I shall be multiplied my days as the sin. Look how good I am. I'm going to have a big nest day. And I'm going to have... Isn't that the guy that we just read about? And, oh, look at how great I am. I'm going to tear my barns down. And, and you know, I'm going to build more, uh, you know, self-storage areas. And I'm just going to have, you know, life hunky dory. Look how great I am. And Job was. And God used the devil for one reason. Because the self-righteousness of Job. God had a purpose. I don't believe Satan knew what it was. And through the talk of Job and his three friends and listening to Job. Listen, you let a man talk and he'll hang himself within time. I've done it. When well, I've been in a prison ministry, I just let that guy talk and let him talk and let him talk and let him talk. And the more he talks, the more he opens his mouth, the more he's putting that foot in his mouth more. And finally, when he's talking about it, he can say, there's your problem right there. I've used it. I, I, I've used that counseling. And then once it comes out of their mouth, you can't, well, I, that's what you said. No, that's your words. Let a man talk and he'll hang himself. Not good to talk. Then I said, I shall die in my nest. Nest day. That's what they call it today. And I shall multiply my days as the sand. A lot of sand. You're not going to be that old, Joe. My root, you know, in the ground, was spread out by the waters. Is that not Psalms chapter 1? The righteous shall flourish as a tree and the roots by the rivers of water. Job saying, listen, look at, look at Job saying, but Psalm chapter 1 and Psalm chapter 1 is not written yet. Scripture with scripture, study show thyself approved unto God, a man that, 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 a man that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Psalm chapter 1 says that righteous man is a tree. He flourishes because his, his, his roots are by the water of life. That's Jesus. Job says before Psalms even written, look at me, my tree, my roots are doing so good. I've got self-righteousness. He's spilling the beans. And the dew lay all night upon my branch. 
That's not normal. Dew is in the morning. Dew is healthy. Dew is proper for plants. Dew is required. And Job saying, my dew, it's there all night long. My glory. Oh, boy. There you go, Job. I thought it was supposed to be God's glory. My glory was fresh in me. Well, up to date. And my bow was renewed in my hand. I got me a brand new bow. I'm doing good. Look at my glory. Unto me. Men gave ear. They listened to me. That's a great plug. And waited. And kept silent at my counsel. When I began to give the counsel, they didn't dare say a word. Now that is the job of the judge. But Job's taking it too far. You know what happened at the time of the Job at this era in the Old Testament? And he's about to give the sentence. You didn't say a word. When that judge pronounced the sentence, you still respected him, even if you were found guilty. But unto me, should it be unto judges? Men give ear and waiting, kept silence at judges' council? No, it's him. After my words, they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. Well, all judges like that, Job, or should be. And they waited for me as the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. And that latter rain pitches the tribulation period, when there's a period in the tribulation that there will be no rain, thanks to Elijah again. And then when you're dealing in the land that we're in right now of Israel, that latter rain was so important to the crops. It was needed. Without that latter rain, there were no crops. That latter rain is a blessing. So he's saying people waited for me, and the greatest blessing they got would be like they got that rain they wanted. Thank you, Job. Me, Job. Oh. Job, there were more people judging than you were. It, uh, if I laughed on them, <laughs> I can see him doing that. They believed it not. Imagine judge on <laughs> here in a case. Guy gets up there, hey, blah blah blah. Hey. <laughs> what were you laughing at? I think your story is a scam. No, not my story. That's what people do. You know, they start telling you something and you giggle and you laugh. Like, what are you laughing at? Because what you're telling me is impossible. It's not right. It's, shut up. No, not my story. No. I've seen people, I've heard people like that all the time. And the light of my countenance, my face, they cast not down. I chose out of their way and sat chief. Oh, boy. Job, pick up your seat, get back to where God is. Job has stepped out of the co-pilot seat and took God out of the pilot seat and said, I'm, I'm driving this airplane now. Look at me. I don't even think God's in the cockpit. Now the righteousness, I put on righteousness, but when you go back over to chapter 27, verse 6, my righteousness. There's a time that Job's got it right now is, it's me, I'm right, I'm always right. Don't you dare prove me wrong. When I say I'm always right, I have the right to tell you you're wrong. You don't have the right to tell me I'm wrong. That's what Job's doing right now. And God says it's a sin. You need to repent and get right. When you're involved with me and how great I am, how great I am, no, it's how great thou art. It's called pride. I chose out their way. I'm the one. I told them where to go. And sat chief. And dwelt as a king in the army. I'm in charge of all the truths. They don't do unless I tell them to do. As one that comforteth the morning. You know, see when people are all upset, it's me. I, they, I, they come to me and I, I'm the only one who can do it. I'm me. Me. Job is now telling us what judges do, but he's also saying, look how great I am. And that's the sin of Job. 
That's what God wanted Job to drive out right now. And he's doing it. 